Right now, in Major League Baseball, we have some active legends. There are some slam dunk Hall of Famers on the mound and at the plate. We'll talk about the hitters later. Right now, let's look at the legendary pitchers still playing today and see who they owned and who owned them. Just a couple notes. I've got a 20 at bat minimum. This is based on OPS, and this will only look at starting pitchers. Clayton Kershaw has been in the league since 2008, and he's got three Cy Young awards. Don't tell that to Christian Walker. He's been playing in the NL West since 2017, really becoming a full-time player in 2019, and he's faced Kershaw 28 times with eight hits. That's a 286 average, so not bad, but not great. Four of those hits were home runs, giving him an OPS of 1025. Anthony Rizzo also terrorized Kershaw, also getting eight hits, but doing it in only 22 at-bats. That's a 364 average, two home runs, two doubles, 1119 OPS. But nobody has been better against Kershaw than Ricky Weeks. He came up in 2003, played mostly for the Brewers, made one all-star team, played one year in Arizona in 2016. But he faced Kershaw 20 times, got seven hits, but five of them were doubles and one was a home run. He finished his career hitting 350 with an OPS of 1185. Now, who did Kershaw own? Andres Torres was never much of a hitter. He played parts of nine seasons and spent about half of it in San Francisco. He faced Kershaw 34 times, getting two hits, striking out 12 times, a 213 OPS. Jonathan Lucre was one of the best catchers in baseball for a few years, but never figured out Kershaw. 24 at bats, one hit, four strikeouts, 160 OPS. Nobody was worse than Austin Hedges. Playing in San Diego, he only faced Kershaw 20 times, but he only had one hit and seven strikeouts, a 145 OPS. Max Scherzer also came up in 2008 and has three Cy Young Awards, even though he's four years older than Kershaw. He had no fun with Jose Bautista, his American League days lining up with Bautista's prime, and Joey Bats had 11 hits and 23 at-bats, a 478 average, four doubles, two homers, and a 1452 OPS. Hall of Famer David Ortiz was also a problem. Nine hits and 21 at-bats, a 429 average, two homers, 1472 OPS. Those guys aren't a big surprise, but Scherzer's biggest foe was Shin Su Chu. 14 hits and 24 at bats, a triple, two doubles, three homers, also six walks, a 583 average, and a 1792 OPS. On the other side, you find another legend, Yadier Molina. Two hits and 21 at bats, five strikeouts, and a 238 OPS. Eduardo Escobar has just about the same line two for 21, but with four strikeouts, also a 238 OPS. But nobody is worse than Reese Hoskins, and how lucky is he to have Scherzer back in the NL East? 30 at-bats, two hits, and the astounding 15 strikeouts. That's good for a 197 OPS. Justin Verlander just joined forces with Max Scherzer this offseason. He came up in 2005 and also has three Cy Young Awards, and he's been around long enough for A-Rod to own him. 35 at-bats, 11 hits, and more than half of them going for extra bases. One double, five homers, four walks, a 314 average and 1171 OPS. Matt Joyce was a good journeyman for a long time, and he could hit Verlander. 20 at bats, eight hits, two of those were doubles and two were home runs, hitting 400 and an OPS of 1255. Verlander's worst nightmare is still playing, and he just joined Verlander's old team, Jose Abreu. 49 at bats, 19 hits, three doubles, six homers, five walks, a 388 average and a 1261 OPS. Verlander had no problems with Abreu's ex-teammate, Tim Anderson. 21 at-bats and only two hits, seven strikeouts, a 190 OPS. Aaron Hicks has struggled against a lot of pitchers, Verlander included. One hit and 20 at-bats, seven strikeouts, a 145 OPS. The worst one was Jeff Mathis, definitely a defensive-minded catcher, and Verlander showed no mercy. 23 at-bats, one hit, 16 strikeouts, a 127 OPS. Verlander was brought to the Mets to replace Jacob deGrom, taking his talents to Texas, getting out of Austin Riley's division. He got six hits and 20 at-bats. Three of those are homers. And even though he struck out half the time, he still hit 300 with a 1083 OPS. Justin Bohr was a slugger, playing mostly for the Marlins, getting eight hits and 22 at-bats, a double and two homers, three walks, a 364 average and 1122 OPS. Nobody owns the Grom more than John Carlos Stanton. 27 at-bats and nine hits, a double and four homers along with four walks. That's a 333 average and a 1234 OPS. Another future Hall of Famer is on the wrong side of this one. Nolan Arenado is only 2 for 20 with a double, 5 strikeouts, and a 250 OPS. Michael A. Taylor was also a constant victim playing so many years in Washington. One hit and 24 at bats, striking out 13 times and having a 122 OPS. Howie Kendrick was the worst. Most of his at bats against DeGrom were when he was on his way out. 
This being Wild DeGrom was in his top form. 20 at bats in one hit, six strikeouts, a 100 OPS. Garrett Cole is on the Hall of Fame highway, but Rafael Devers is thrilled to have him in the AL East. He may only be seven for 30, a 233 average with 14 strikeouts, but six of those seven hits were home runs. That's good for 1175 OPS. Christian Yelich has met up with Cole 22 times and has nine hits, two doubles, three homers, four walks, a 409 average and a 1409 OPS. And then there's G-Man Choi of all people, 10 for 24, three doubles, three homers, six walks, 417 average and 1450 OPS. Cole dominated Ian Kinsler, a great player in his prime, but he was only two for 25 with seven strikeouts, a 200 OPS. Kyle Seeger also recently retired with pretty bad numbers against Cole. One for 20, eight strikeouts, 145 OPS. But the worst guy is still going strong, Matt Olson. He's 0 for 21, 14 strikeouts, but his two walks get him an 087 OPS. Adam Wainwright is at the tail end of his great career, so some of these names are a blast from the past. Freddy Galvis was never a big bat, but he was 9 for 22, two doubles, two homers, a 409 average and a 1231 OPS. Charlie Blackman is also an old guy, but he's only faced Wainwright 22 times, also getting nine hits, three doubles, one homer, 409 average and a 1231 OPS. By far, Wainwright's kryptonite was James Loney. Dodger fans remember how frustrating he was, but he went 18 for 34, five doubles, a home run, a 529 average and 1308 OPS. Not a ton of power, but a 529 average speaks for itself. Wainwright had success against El Caballo, Carlos Lee. He hasn't played in 10 years, but he was only three for 29, four strikeouts, a 338 OPS. More contemporary, Jorge Soler is two for 20, nine strikeouts, a 317 OPS. Finally, Gregor Blanco had some good years in San Francisco, but he was always a light hitter and he was only three for 23 against Wainwright. Five strikeouts, a 297 OPS. Zach Grinke is still around and he's got some old players on this list, but not this first one. Right when Cody Bellinger came up, Grinke joined the Diamondbacks, so he's gotten his cuts and he owns Grinke. 13 for 26, a 500 average, three doubles, two homers, a 1382 OPS. Then you gotta go way back to Jason Giambi, seven hits and 21 at bats for a 333 average. But of those seven hits, five were home runs, good for a 1439 OPS. But nobody owns Grinke like Corey Seager. Eight for 21, 381 average, two doubles, three homers, and six walks, a 1440 OPS. Just like Garrett Cole, Grinke also owns Matt Olson. Two for 20, seven strikeouts, and a 293 OPS. Then you got a couple old guys, back when Grinke was in his prime. First, Brandon Phillips, facing Grinke a lot when he was in Cincinnati and Grinke was in Milwaukee. Just three for 28 and four strikeouts, a 107 average, and a 281 OPS. Grinke also owned Sean Figgins. You want a throwback name, there you go. He spent most of his career with the Angels, and he was two for 24, seven strikeouts and a 205 OPS. Chris Sale is awesome when he's not injured. He's got a shot at the Hall of Fame if he has a few more great years, and none of his batters are still playing today. First, Edwin Encarnacion, nine for 26, three homers, hitting 346 and an OPS of 1126. Adam Rosales, there's a name you didn't expect. He had a 78 career OPS plus, but he was seven for 20 off sale, including three homers. That's an 1164 OPS. Finally, a guy that had a great career, Victor Martinez, 22 hits, three doubles, four homers, ending with a 423 average and 1177 OPS. Sale picked on Brian Pena, two hits and 24 at bats, six strikeouts, a 208 OPS. Also, Jonathan VR, two hits and 20 at bats, an amazing 13 strikeouts, a 195 OPS. The worst against Sale was Austin Jackson. All those years in Detroit while Sale was in Chicago, they faced off 38 times and Jackson only got two hits, striking out 17 times. That's an 053 average and a 179 OPS. Last one, Steven Strasburg. He's barely seen the field in the last three years, but he did win World Series MVP before that and he's got some elite stuff. Dan Ugla didn't seem to care. He was 12 for 30, two doubles, two homers, a 400 average and 1121 OPS. Nolan Arenado also has his number, six for 20, three of those hits being homers, hitting 300 and 1141 OPS. Finally, you have Charlie Blackman, eight for 20 with five doubles, a home run, and a 1200 OPS. One of Strasburg's division foes was Chase Utley, and he owned him, five for 32. That's a 156 average, no extra base hits, seven strikeouts, and a 338 OPS. 
Starling Castro was only 3 for 26, striking out 12 times, a 294 OPS. And then you have Juan Lagares. All those years with the Mets, he had no fun with Strasburg. 2 for 20, 9 strikeouts, and a 195 OPS. So there you go. Not all of these guys will be Hall of Famers, but they all have a shot. Later on, I'll look at the best active hitters and see what pitchers they own and who owns them. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like. And if you're new here and love baseball, please give me a sub. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.